I am an obsessive compulsive gardener and I am totally biased because I genuinely believe that gardens and gardening is the solution to everything, especially the urban heat island effect that we're all concerned about. As urban infill results in smaller blocks and houses with a bigger footprint, we're left with smaller outdoor spaces. Now I don't care how big your space is, we can green it up and cool it down. Now ideally, plants should be planted in the ground, but if you've got no ground, you can still grow plants in pots, raised beds or wicking beds. And not only can these plants feed us, but they can cool us. Now there are three factors, shade, shelter and reducing unnecessary areas of hot reflective surfaces. Shade from trees is obvious. I'm a big fan of deciduous trees in small spaces because they cool us down in summer and let the precious winter sun in. Climbing vines are another way that we can cool down structures and they make a huge difference. Now again, deciduous plants allow that passive heating and cooling of our homes and it actually reduces our energy consumption. And the deciduous leaves that fall can be composted to make our gardens grow better and our veggies taste better. Climbing vines are great, but they take a couple of years to create that shade. There's an amazing group of quick-growing edible plants that will grow up, give you shade, and feed you in just a couple of months. This is my Climbing New Guinea Bean Arch. It was planted from seed in November. This is it here. Okay, now, I'm an obsessive compulsive gardener. This is my OCD meter. It's an infrared thermometer used to measure surface temperatures. This is the temperature under my New Guinea bean arch on a 40 degree day. It's not only climbing New Guinea beans, there's all sorts of climbing veggies. We've got climbing tomatoes or a South American cucumber-like vegetable called kigwa or a chocha. These again were planted in late November and created summer shade. Now I'm in a frosty area on the Adelaide Plains you could actually plant in late September. Other vertical veggies can actually be used for windbreaks or shading things. So this is a climbing tromboncino. That one there. It's a climbing zucchini and it's shading the western wall of my shed. Now on a 40 degree day when the temperature in the sun was 45 degrees, this was 14 degrees. Now obviously we need good structures to be able to grow climbing veggies up, but it doesn't have to be complicated. This is a sheet of builder's mesh secured to some star droppers. And this is also edible. This is climbing Malabar or Salon spinach. Very ornamental and delicious. We also need to think not only about walls but about the ground surface. We need to consider how much paving we actually need. And if we need it at all, let's make it pale in colour. These temperatures were in Kent Town on a 42 degree day. We need to make sure that that paving is pervious to to let the water go back in the ground. But it's not only what's in our yard, it's what's around that. These temperatures were on a 29 degree day in Barangaroo on Sydney Harbour. Unfortunately, where do you think the people and the dogs were walking? On the bitumen. Now concrete's cooler but it's still too hot to have in large areas around our home. Lawn is a wonderful cool surface. The average front lawn actually has the equivalent cooling value of two air conditioners. It absorbs stormwater, it helps to filter dust, pollution, um, it helps to absorb noise, and best of all, it actually adds value to your home. But please don't think that synthetic turf is a sustainable alternative to real turf. This is in Murray Bridge on a 40 degree day. Um, actually, sorry, 35 degree day. The temperature of the synthetic turf was almost double the um, day's temperature. And the other thing that concerns me is not only the carbon um, footprint that synthetic rollout plastic has, but we have a problem with landfill in 10 to 15 years when it needs to be pulled up and sent to the dump. So, a garden that's set up with shade, shelter, one where things screen out those hot north winds on a really hot day, something that where the hot north wind gets um, 
filtered through the screen, it gets cooled passing under a tree, and then it passes over a limited area of lawn and picks up moisture. It will cool your home and your outdoor environment. And we call that natural evaporative air conditioning. Thank you.